my hat's on because 2016 is over. Thank God it's over. If there was ever a year that promised me a lot and just underdelivered, Ooh, 2016, I'm not going to remember you with much fondness. In all honesty, you've given us Trump, you've given us the Brexit, and you've given me movie upon movie, which has promised me great things, and has just left me going, meh. But amongst all the crap, there's some real turd burgers in here. And I'm going to count down. I haven't seen all the movies this year, and based on what I've seen, I'm kind of glad about that. There have been some good ones. Go see my top 10 best of 2016. But it's mostly been really bad. Really, really, really bad. So with that said, having not seen all the movies, I'm gonna now take a big steaming shit on the shit that I think has just offended me to my core. Here's my top 10 worst of 2016. 10. Yeah, I never thought this would happen. Always loved Batman. One of my, well, he's my second favorite superhero out there. Spidey rules. But to have a Batman movie make my top 10, especially with the brilliant voice acting and of Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill returning as the Joker in one of the most iconic comic book storylines ever put to paper. What more could you want? How the hell did they mess this up? First off, I understand. People are like, I didn't like it because of the Barbara Gordon uh, storyline and the fact that they had to give Batgirl such significance. Well, guys, frankly, fucking allow me to disagree. If that hadn't happened, if that first half of the movie hadn't been shown, Spoiler alert, when Joker shoots Barbara Gordon through the spine, that would have had absolutely no significance whatsoever. I know they tried to stick close to the storyline of the comic, and from that end, I guess they did a good job. It didn't translate well to film. It just didn't. The ambivalent ending, the really, really bad pacing, it felt like an extended episode of the old animated series of Batman just drawn out really too far. It was just not great really really not great how how I, I don't get how as I said in my top 10 best video some having watched other people's top 10 lists this has made some people's top 10 best but beyond my fucking understanding this is one of the most awful little gore porn movies I've ever seen group of kids Go into this building where you've got these neo-Nazis holding a big metal concert. Shit gets real. They hide in the green room. They run out, one gets killed. They run hide back in the green room. Nazis try to get in. Nazis stop trying to get in. One of them runs out again, gets killed. Copy, paste, copy, paste, repeat, repeat. I mean, please leave your comments below, but did I miss something? Have, have I watched the same movie as everyone else? This was embarrassing. It was unfulfilling. It was... Just, it felt like Eli Roth gore porn. It's like, let's be violence for the sake of violence. Leave. Eight. Ask me before this movie came out who I think the greatest director of all time is, I probably would have said Steven Spielberg. The only director who's won four Best Director Awards for four different movie genres. There is no doubt that Spielberg is one of the granddaddies of modern day cinema. The guy needs a bit of a revival. His last few movies have been... And this, I mean... Before watching this, maybe I made a mistake because I actually watched the old animated BFG and the darkness in that old one really gave the movie some gravitas. It gave it some stakes. I don't know why Spielberg took a story and it's just an adaptation. Why did he take a story that was pretty well balanced in terms of its kiddie friendliness and in terms of its real life gravitas? Why did he dumb it down so much? Why did he make a kid's movie too kiddie, if that makes sense? But the darkness gone. When it comes to kids movies, Pixar have proved you do not need to be stupid when you're making a kids movie. This just really took a step back. I mean, I've always been one to say, look, animation and kids movies, don't judge them just by their cover. Don't judge them just because their soul is kids movies. A lot of the time you can find some depth in there. Thanks, BFG. You've really, really made me have a hard time proving this point. Seven. Did we need this? Did we really need this? No, of course we didn't. It's been done so many times, this story, and people are gonna say that I'm giving it a bad fucking rap because of the fact that it's been done so many times. No, 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 no. You can do a story again and again and make and reinvent it and make it interesting. This just was, it, it just felt so by the numbers. It was so uninspiring. The acting was terrible. The consequences were 
just embarrassing. It, it was so... Do you know why I'm having trouble describing it now? And if it sounds like I'm stuttering a bit, because it was just so fucking forgettable. But Tarzan should be exciting. Tarzan should be fun. Ugh. I, I can't remember it enough to be able to shit on it. It was just a yawn fest. Terrible movie. Six. This one hurt because the first one was actually really fun. The magic obviously in the first movie wasn't ever meant to be realistic, but you really would, you know, on the borderline of just suspending disbelief going, well, maybe I'm in a movie, I can get bored in. They took the magic tricks just that one step too far in this movie. And the other problem being, you know, I get the whole tip of the hat to Daniel Radcliffe being in a magic movie, ha ha, Harry Potter, cool, whatever. They should have done a wand reference in all honesty. They didn't, not a big deal. But the fact of the matter is the plot, mm -mm, did not work. Really, really did not work. It took a, it, the first one had some really good ideas. The second one was just, it got stupid. Really, really stupid, which is a shame. And unfortunately, you're going to see from now on in my list, a lot of sequels cropping up that have just, you know, not done wonders for what the franchise that they belong to. Moving on. Five. Yes, in a year of good horror movies, why, why, why did we have to have a bad one? We had such good ones. We had The Conjuring 2, Don't Breathe, but where the hell this fits in, I don't know. The first movie wasn't good. This one wasn't scary. I mean, <sighs> disclaimer, I actually fell asleep because it bored me so much. Now that, that should tell you everything. If you can fall asleep in a horror movie at 6 p.m. in the evening, there's a problem. Read into that what you will. I can fall asleep when I'm going to a midnight screening, but an uh, you know an early evening screening of a horror movie? I'm falling asleep. Problem. Forgive my ignorance. I don't know how much American audiences know about David Brent and the Old Office series. Hopefully a lot, because it was it's a huge success here in the UK, and the UK generally loves Ricky Gervais. And his character, David Brent, has always been about making the audience uncomfortable and taking, you know, stereotypes of, of human character to an extreme degree and putting it in an office workspace. This, it, it took it too far. It wasn't relatable anymore. You didn't feel sorry for him. It, it was 10 years too late, this movie. And whereby you normally get laughs with Ricky Gervais, you normally get, you know, uncomfortable laughs, granted. The, this was neither. It was really, really just a, a slugfest of shit. You would waiting for the big moment to come. All of the best moments, this is a problem with a lot of comedies. When you see the best moments in the trailer, that's when you've been let down. And there haven't been a lot of great comedies this year, sadly. There have been one or two, but nothing that made my top 10 list of best. Um, but this, uh-uh. Really, really bad comedy, 10 years too late, and it almost does a little undertone of Ricky Gervais almost trying to advance a music career that, mm -mm, don't do it, Ricky, please, 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 don't do it, don't do it. Moving on. And the top three, we are there, and my first entry into the top three worst of the year, Right along too. I didn't see the first one, but I heard really, really good things about it. I've never been the biggest Kevin Hart fan, although, truth be told, I'd quite like Central Intelligence with him and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. This was, how do you take a member of the, I mean, I, I know this applies to the first one, but how do you take a member of the NWA? Cue the music. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it back. How does that turn into, we the police? I mean, I said it in my review, go check it out now. Really weak, weak characters. Unbelievable story. A buddy cop movie should be fun and engaging. 21 Jump Street, what up? This just, it wasn't funny. But the fact of the matter is, is that this movie didn't work. I don't know if there were audience out there who liked it. Leave your comment below. But this I thought was a pile of shit. This just missed out of top spot. But this just took a 90s franchise that was so beloved, that was so well balanced as an action movie, which was so fun and refreshing, and it somehow ruined it. I mean, people are gonna say, yeah, it was ruined because of Will Smith not being there. In part, in part, the overblown effects, the wooden fucking acting from this new set. Even Jeff Goldblum couldn't save this. Not that he was fucking trying to save this, but the story. 
was just terrible. And I've said this a few times in all of my movies, but I guess guys, stories are probably an important thing when you're making a movie. That's what it is. It's a story through the art of movement. If you're not telling a good story through the art of movement, by extension, you're not a fucking good movie. What did you do Independence Day? Why did you have to go so big? It was literally like, let's make it bigger. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Bigger. Why? Bigger isn't always better. And I'm not, you know, Read into that what you will, I feel a little pun coming on below that. Pun intended, little. Haha, <laughs> no. But the fact of the matter is, is that this just went too far. And the effects weren't even good. The effects were not even good. And it got creepy. Fucking taking kids around in a school bus, picking them up, and then the stupidity of trying to take out the queen alien at the end. Alien 2 called. It wants its fucking idea back. And it wants you to never do something like that again. Roland Emmerich, be ashamed. How dare you? How dare you make something that was so offensive to the core? Everything was just wrong in this movie. The caca, caca of the fucking turtles. Casey Jones not wearing his mask and played by a Stephen Amell who frankly needs to go back to acting school. That's Officer Jones to you. And I'm gonna be a detective someday. Fuck you. I mean, Michael Bay didn't direct this, but it just stank of Michael Bay. It stank of Michael Bay. Shredder. Well, we didn't see a Shredder. We saw a generic Asian guy played by Brian T. By the way, I'm pretty sure there was a Shredder in the first movie who looked nothing like this. Pretty sure Shredder's meant to fight the turtles. Oh, and Krang. Let's not even get started on Krang. Give me part to the Mad Hatter. I'm going to do this. I'm for the whole movie. I'm Krang is supposed to speak like Krang because Krang is enemy of the turtles. That is who Krang is. What the fuck are you doing to me? I get Megan Fox can't act. I understand that she's just there. But when a woman is wearing a full length set of trousers and the next scene she's wearing a skirt, shoot the fucking editing team. Bebop and Rocksteady. Ha ah, man, we've waited years to see Bebop and rock steady on the silver screen. And the turtles fight them once. Once! And it's the only good fucking scene in the movie. Even though it's over the top, but hey, it's an actual movie. It's meant to be over the top. Why? <laughs> Why did you do this to me? Bring in Casey, bring in Bebop and Rocksteady, bring in Krang, bring in Shredder. Everything's there. And it didn't work. I, I, I have nothing left to say. People are saying, it's a kid's movie. Fuck you, it's a franchise movie. And when you're doing a franchise, treat it with some goddamn respect and love. Because the people going to see a franchise movie are people who love that franchise. They are people who are wanting to see what they've seen in another format recreated with a bit of fucking loyalty. Did this happen? Mm -mm. No, sir, it did not. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, go check out my review now. It's a funny one. It offended me to my motherfucking core. This is an abomination of movie making. Oh, and I've never ranked a movie so low, by the way. Go see it now, because this was a funny one. And AJ, my old partner, who was actually doing reviews with me at the time, I don't know what movie he watched, and I don't know how he scored it so highly. Yo, that one accurate. Sorry, AJ, if you're watching, I had to get that one out there, mate. But the fact of the matter is, you're wrong. Everyone's entitled to repeat to their opinion, but AJ, you're wrong. You're wrong, it's simple. This movie is a fucking abomination. It should never have seen the light of day. And please, just don't make another one for a very long time. Let me recover from this. But I wanna hear what you guys thought of 2016. I know it hasn't been a great year for movies, but what is your worst movie this year? What is the absolute dog shit that you've seen that you will really really offended you that you will never be able to forget or forgive leave your thoughts in your comments below give this video a thumbs up and please be sure to subscribe to the silver screen dudes we're mixing things up for 2017 we're now going to be doing movie reviews only and we're going to be doing that every single weekend three to four reviews as much as we can bring you guys so tune in to see this guy nico lira of the silver screen dudes bringing you honest reviews so until next time see ya